Hendro, let me just ask you about this, because when you and I talked, there was some money coming in. This was in the early days. This was, uh, I think, the Monday after the expulsions. There was some money coming into your party. I know the Wisconsin Democratic chair had said uh, they'll match a certain number of don donations. But it's become much more than that. There are people who are ringing, ringing your phones off the hook to say, how do I, you know, how do I get involved? What are you telling them? And what kind of numbers are we talking about? Absolutely. Uh, we've seen a huge influx of people uh, calling the office, wanting to figure out how they can get involved. People from across the nation, uh, thousands of people from right here in the state. And we're hearing from folks who simply want to volunteer, people who want to step up and run for office, and people who a lot of them want to leave the Republican Party because of some of the uh, issues that they've seen play out uh, nationally. Uh, what we've been telling them is that you know, this is an unprecedented moment for us, but we're not turning anyone away. And we want to make sure that we capitalize on this movement, keep them fired up and engaged and mobilized as we head into three special elections in our state and then head it into 2024. So we've got to make sure that we keep them engaged and we, got to, we have to make sure that we have a party that can help deliver results. Uh, Representative Clemens, this is actually a bigger deal than it sounds like because what was news to those of us who didn't know much about the Tennessee legislature was the number of Republicans in your chamber who run unopposed. Uh, they, they are claimed right. to their positions because people don't even run against them because, I don't know, is that because they think it's a lost cause that, that we're not going to win against Republicans? And can, that, can this set of events have an influence on, on that kind of thing? I mean, nobody should be running unopposed in America. Right. Well, I certainly hope so. You know, we, we the problem in Tennessee is, is not only do we have gerrymandered districts, we've had a lot of voter suppression laws passed in recent years. That's why we say we're not a red state. We just suffer from those two elements in the state of Tennessee. But, you know, we, we need the resources. We, we have 99 House districts. Uh, 75 of those are Republican, unfortunately. But we have got to get the resources and the manpower in the state of Tennessee. So, Worst case scenario, all of this national attention and spotlight has finally, you know, brought some attention to Tennessee and what we really need. And we really need help from outside of this state. It's a remarkable uh, point because it can be made about some other southern states, not red states, but the way voting and gerrymandering works is it makes them feel like red states in perpetuity. Uh, Justin Pearson, uh, well, your colleague, was on the readout tonight. Uh, uh, Hendrel, I want you to hear what he had to say, and I, and, and I want to get your comments on it. Let's listen. The reality is the South is going to be the place that dictates where America is. The yep. litmus test for our country is what's happening in the South. And if we negate what is going on in the place that has the most African Americans, but it's also the place where you have Memphis and you've got Birmingham, you've got Montgomery, you've got Nashville, Come on. these places that built and were the pillars of the civil rights movement. If we negate those places, we're really negating our history of what movement and movements and justice look like. It's an, it's an interesting statement because he named all those places that are not only pillars of the civil rights movement, but in fact are places with dynamic, uh, politicized uh, uh, African-American communities, Democratic communities. It doesn't map over onto state legislatures all that well, but, but there's, there are people who are energized and want to do things in Tennessee and across the South. I couldn't agree more. I've been in this position for two years, and the amount of energy that I've seen, uh, I haven't seen in this state since the 2006 U.S. Senate run uh, that Harold Ford Jr. did across the state. Uh, there are people who are really stepping up to get engaged and involved in the process, especially young people. We have had an outpouring of young people who want to get involved and who actually want to run for office uh, because they understand that this is a moment to not only help transform their communities, but to transform our state and ultimately help to transform our nation and put it on a track towards a more progressive and prosperous future for everyone. Uh, Representative, I want to uh, play something from the night of the expulsion votes uh, between you and the uh, and the and the speaker in the in the House. And then I want to ask you about this, because I've, I've, I've had this discussion with a lot of people who say the Republicans down there don't feel any remorse over this thing. They're, they're just fine with how things went. In my mind, this seems to be a bit of an embarrassment for them. Let's just play this exchange that you had. We are talking about nothing less than 75 people overruling the wishes of 78,000 people. And you're going to cut off debate? Give me a break. Is this a circus? You are talking about kicking somebody out of this body. Grow up. If you can't sit through a conversation or a debate on something no less than expelling a colleague, grow up. Get out of here! You don't belong!
wrong here? I don't know how many Republicans you upset with that that night, but have they all re have any of them said to you that this maybe wasn't a good idea? Well, I think they're kind of tone deaf on this whole issue. They think this is all just a passing, you know, phase that, you know, it's going to peak and go away. And I admit that right now the knob is kind of turned up to 11, but I don't think this thing's going much lower. And I hope we can keep it there for the next 18 months. You know, my colleagues across the aisle, they continue to just think this is is nothing and this isn't going to affect them in any way. I mean, they've had one power rule in the state of Tennessee for so long they just take it for granted. They're already getting, you know, lazy, and, and they're just taking all this power for granted, and they're abusing it, obviously. Uh, they went so far as to expel or try to expel three of my colleagues for simply approaching the well. So, you know, I, I, this it, they, they continue to be tone deaf.